Number one says that we have a fan blade that spins counterclockwise once per second. Which of the graphs best depicts the height of P after S seconds? The fan blades are one foot long and the height is measured in feet from the center of the fan blades. So we're looking at this being like a height of zero and then it's gonna go counterclockwise. So the height is going like if I, let me get that off of there. Um, but so if we go counterclockwise, this is a height of zero. Now we're going up in height. Okay, now we're the furthest away from the center and we're going back down to the center. Okay, now we're lower than the height of the center and we're the lowest possible now, okay, or the furthest below that center. And now we're going up again until we reach here. So we went up to start. So this one is a possibility, okay? This one is not. So B is not gonna work because it goes down, okay? Um, C goes down, so that's not going to work. D goes up, okay? And so we're looking at A and D. The reason it's going to be D is it gets to the highest point away once to the lowest point away once and then gets back to that one second. This one is getting through two full rotations in a second where D is getting through one. Number two, which statements are modeled accurately by a periodic function? Select all that apply. So which ones of these are periodic? So the distance from the Earth to the sun is a function of time. That's true. That changes throughout the year and then repeats. The vertical height of a point on a rotating wheel as a function of time, yes, repeats itself. Area of a sheet of paper as a function of the number of times it's folded, no because it's just folding and getting smaller and then it doesn't get larger again. Number of centimeters in X inches, no, that's just a specific value. The height of a swinging pendulum as a function of time, yes, because it's gonna swing back and forth and repeat itself. F, the height of a ball tossed in the air as a function of time, no. It's just gonna go up, come back down, and then be done. Number three, here's the graph of a function, and we're showing some, um, we're showing the function for some x values. Could we extend this graph so that the whole plane of the function is periodic? Explain your reasoning. So could we make this a periodic function? Certainly, right? Like we could go down, and then we could come back up, and then we could go down. Over here, it could go up and then back down, and so it could just be repeating this pattern. So we certainly could. Um, make it periodic, so up and down as shown, and then just say that it's gonna continue extending in that pattern. Could we extend um, this graph in the whole plane so that F is not periodic? Explain your reasoning. And yeah, we could just you know, make it a straight line. Okay, so that would not be periodic because it's not going up and down and repeating, oscillating. Okay, so that one would be an example of a non-periodic. Um, you could also have it go up on that side, okay, up on both sides. So kind of like an absolute value function, neither of those would be periodic because they're not repeating. Number four, can a constant, can a non-constant linear function um, be periodic? Explain your reasoning. So a non-constant linear, so it's just going to be a straight line, okay, just not straight across, so not horizontal. And no, this couldn't be periodic, okay, because the slope um, would stay the same. So it couldn't, whoops, so it couldn't have um, repeating values. Can a quadratic function be periodic? And no, because on the one side of the vertex, it's gonna be going up, down, I guess, if it's negative, okay? And the other side going up as well, or down on both sides. So they aren't going to um, repeat. They're not gonna come back up and go back down. So it's just 
looking like this. So quadratic just looks like this. So it's just going to keep going up on either side or it's going to keep going down on either side. So it's not going to be repeating. Number five, do the points 7, 1, and negative 5, 5 lie on the same circle centered at 0, 0? Explain how you know. So the equation for this function or for this circle would be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared would equal the radius squared. So as long as these two points have the same radius when we do x squared plus y squared, then they're going to be on the same circle. So we'll just look at 7 squared plus 1 squared. So that's 49 plus 1, which is 50. Okay, so this is going to be our r squared. So then the radius is going to be square root 50 in this circle. Um, and if we do this other one, and we do negative 5 squared plus 5 squared, so that's going to be 25 plus 25. And so then that's going to be 50 equals r squared. So again, we're going to get a radius of square root of 50. And so these are going to be on the same circle since they have the same radius or they're the same distance away from 0, 0. Number six, the measure of angle theta is between 0 and 2 pi radians. Which statements must be true about sine and cosine? Select all that apply. So cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Yes, that's a Pythagorean triple, or not triple, but that's the Pythagorean identity. If sine of theta equals 0, then cosine of theta automatically equals 1. So let's look at where sine equals 0. That's when the y value is 0. So we're here. Okay, so this is 1. Um, and the cosine is 1 because cosine is x. Sine is y. But we could also be over here at negative 1, 0. So if sine is 0, so we know sine is 0, then cosine has to be 1 is false. If the sine is 1, then cosine has to be 0. So if we know the sine is 1, and that's the y value, so at this point, 0, 1. So here's where the sine is 1, and that's the only place. Because down here, sine is negative 1. So if we're here, if sine is 1, then cosine is 0. That is true. Sine plus Cosine equals 1, that's false. And you can look at, I mean, it, it is on these quadrantals, but you could take any other point. So you could go to the um, point, um, point 0.71, point 0.71 out of pi over 4, and add those together. So point 0.71 plus point 0.71 does not equal 1. That proves that that's false. And the point... Um, cosine of theta comma sine of theta lies on the unit circle. That is true. Okay, the x is the cosine and the y is the sine. So sine of theta, cosine of theta, or sorry, cosine theta, sine theta will be on the unit circle. Number seven, the center of a clock is at the origin zero, zero on the coordinate system. The hour hand is four units long. Okay, so our radius here is four units long. What are the coordinates at the end of each hour hand? Um, so let's just draw on a clock here. So three o'clock um, is this first one. So here's three o'clock. And if we're at three o'clock, that would um, normally on our unit circle be at the point one zero. So then if our radius is 4, we would just multiply it by 4. So this ordered pair is going to be the point 4, 0. Um, 8 o'clock. So here is, whoops, let's get a different color. So we've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's 8 o'clock. And remember, each of the hours is a pi over 6. Okay, so this one specifically is going to be um, 7 pi over 6 because we're just 1 pi over 6 past halfway because here would be pi and pi is 6 pi over 6. So this angle here is 7 pi over 6. And on your unit circle, that's the ordered pair negative 0.87, negative 0.5. 
So now on this clock, we're just going to multiply those by 4 to get our ordered pair, just scale it out. So we'd get negative um, 3.5, negative 2. And then 11 o'clock. So 11 o'clock is going to be, so this would be at 9, 10, 11 o'clock. And so if we look at this angle on our unit circle, right, so we're at um, one, two, three, four of these spaces. So this is four pi over six, which is two pi over three. And on our unit circle, that ordered pair is point is negative 0. 0.5 and then 0. 0.87. And now on here, we're going to multiply it by four since our radius is not a unit, it's four units. And so when we multiply that by four, we're going to be at the, uh, whoops, the ordered pair negative two um, and then 3.5.